Off to burp, sorry. Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and I'm here today with Tuesday's episode of Spurbats with extra added Jack Bryden. Yes! How are you? I'm good, thank you. We were just talking about Jack's Spanish accent because uh, he's got one. Why don't you do an impression? No. Do Rowan Atkinson in Spanish. What do you mean? <laughs> Mr. Bean is silent. On today's show, we'll be talking about the Inter result. We'll be talking about Eric Lamella's performance because I asked Jack specifically, who do you want to talk about from the Inter match? And he said Eric Lamella. I just want to talk about him. I'm really excited. So we about will. Him. We're also going to talk about Cameron Carter Vickers, who has played at centre back in every preseason game so far and has improved gradually. Uh, we're going to talk about Danny Murphy, who has said he doesn't rate uh, Vincent Janssen yet, says he's unproven. Uh, we're going to talk about how Jamie Redknapp says Spurs could potentially win the league this season and what is the future for Nabil Bentaleb. So let's start with the intermatch. It was 6-1. Jack, what did you make of it overall? Well, I've just watched the highlights again. I It was a really impressive performance, yep. I thought. Um, I especially thought that the front four were really interchanging really well, and I think that worked really well, and I'm excited to see how that you know, progresses over the totally. season. Totally. A lot of fans have been <coughs> saying uh, in the close season, you know, we need to spend, we need to get an option in um, to kind of push Ericsson on a bit more. But I really feel like it's important not to forget that those last three games of the season last se uh, last season, like I said, let me say last season again, um, obviously Deli Alley was suspended. And I'd kind of almost forgotten about that because of mine taken over so much by the fact that we lost to Southampton and then we lost 5-1 to Newcastle. But when Deli, Christian and Lamella play together behind Harry Kane, it's almost sometimes telepathic, their understanding. Mm. And also, now we've seen that Harry, I mean, we've seen it before last season, but with Janssen stepping in as well, you can see that Kane can step into that three behind as well. And, it, and like I say, that front four, we've, now we've got Janssen in, it, it, it's exciting times. Yeah. And I think that next season, I think we'll you know, continue with that, the massive um, goal scoring that we had last season. Yeah, of course, last season was the best goal difference we've had in my lifetime, I think pretty much, certainly in my memorable lifetime. Um, Vincent Janssen got a good run out. I thought his back to goal play was excellent. His finish was great as well on his swing. And let's not forget, he is left footed, but he scored. There's some, I think if, I, if memory serves, put me right uh, in the comment section below. But I think of his kind of 25 odd goals he scored in the Dutch league last season, I think 15 with, with his left and 10 with his right. So he's worked on both sides. Uh, but like I said, his kind of a target man play was what really impressed me. So none of those with his head? I'm just kind of talking well, ballpark. No, that's, no, that's, that's good knowledge anyway, but I mean. <laughs> especially if it's right. Yeah, especially if it is right. If it's, um, but yeah, no, that is good. I, I completely didn't register that it was on his right foot. But like you said, he's a strong player. Yeah. And he played on the line with that goal. He played on the line. On he the stayed on side really well and curled it around the goalkeeper. I think it was a really good finish into the side netting as well. So, you know, for anyone who, who doesn't think that he's going to be good next season, he's... We'll yeah, we'll move on to that, a, on to that a bit later because Danny Murphy does talk a bit about that. Uh, that goal that he scored, of course, was created by Deli Ali, who looks like he's chomping at the bit. I feel mm. like uh, obviously three games missed out, like I mentioned, and then didn't really work out for him uh, in an England shirt over the summer. It will do in the future of that, I have no doubt. Um, but in that goal, you know, there were loads of examples. Obviously, his goal where he played the one-two with Janssen was excellent mm -hmm. as well. That was Janssen with his back to goal, laying it back to him. And just the first time strike as a goalkeeper. I think the goalkeeper got a bit of stick from the commentator saying it went through him a bit. But when you hit it that early as yeah. a keeper, you've got no time to set yourself. You don't know where it's going. Um, but Delhi for Janssen's goal, took on three or four players on the edge of the box and, and drew a foul and, and it broke to him. Mm. So he looks up for it. Yeah, no, he, de he definitely does. Also, just to go on uh, to Janssen, back on to Janssen, he was involved in Harrison's goal as well. Yeah, so he, he passed it out wide, the ball came in, and then Harrison got his goal. And so it was, uh, I believe it was Lamella who played it through hmm. to, oh no, it was it was Janssen who played it through to Lamella who, who, who cut it across in, yeah. for Harrison. So, good teamwork. No, he is, and as I say, that, that front four, promising things, going to be really good next season. Excited to say that. So bringing up Lamella, obviously um, you you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how he played, but also I've got to say, you know, and I've said it before, but I'll say here it's only a year, just as it was only a year ago that Deli <coughs> Ali had never played for Spurs, and um, you know he got his uh, his debut. He came on as a sub against Man United in the first game of last season. But a year ago, I was saying that I had severe doubts about whether Eric Lamella would ever make it as a Spurs player, and the change couldn't be any mm. bigger, could it? Well, a lot of us were saying this, you know, I was at pains to, to give him stick about his performances and things because I always genuinely thought that there would be a point when it, he would start to um, 
Kind of believe in himself Believe in more, himself, yeah. yeah, believe in himself and actually start to justify that price tag, that 30 million pound price tag or whatever it was. Um, and I'm really happy with how he's, you know, you can see, even on, you know, I spend a lot of time on, a, on social media. So you follow Eric Lamella and he just looks up for it. Yeah. You know, everything he's talking about, he's really up for it. He's really excited about this season. His goal against Inter as well the other Fantastic day was incredible. Finish. You know, I, I, when he fir first hit it, I thought it took a deflection maybe, mm. but it's, it was a clean shot, top corner keeper couldn't get it at all. That was absolutely brilliant. And I think, uh, let us know what you think about this, but I think the fact that he went away to the Copa America with Argentina in the summer, mm. and he didn't start every game, but he was involved in every game. And I think the way I feel about it is it he doesn't seem tired in any way, but he seems confident. And I feel like going away with Messi and the likes of them, obviously they were beaten in the final, but the fact that he started to really properly get involved in the Argentinian squad has given him an extra bit of belief. Yeah, and add that to like you say, the fact they didn't win the Copa America, they come so close only to, to be beaten on penalties. And also the way last season ended. Yeah, It's going to give you that extra hunger to to come out and, and prove everyone wrong. He's still got a lot of people that he needs to prove prove wrong. Yeah. But people are starting to, to turn around and say, look, this is actually a good quality player. Um, what I like about him as well, he's like, I've said this before, he's not the best tackler in the world, but he will get your team up for a game. Yeah. If it's a big game, he'll throw in a tackle. He'll put it in and very Argentinian yeah, spirit, isn't and, it? And he works really hard, and you can see that he's putting in the effort. And, you know, I'm starting to really, really, really love him as a player. Yeah. I think, you know, Spurs fans have always <laughs> wanted it to work for him, and now they're seeing, I think, especially in, under Pochettino with him, um, that Pochettino, I think, has instilled in him that work rate is absolutely key and Spurs mm. fans although they love a flair player and sometimes he you know in the past Which he, has he can made, be yeah yeah but sometimes he's made the decision to try and do something flary over do something that is an easier yeah. decision I feel like now not only is his, his work rate is absolutely up there I'd be you know in the top three of all Spurs players I know Ericsson runs the most but Lamella is definitely up there but also his decision making is is getting much better from what I would say kind of this time last year, I'd say is probably 50-50 in terms of good decisions to bad decisions as to when to pass and when to dribble. Now he's doing it more often than not. And realizing, I think, that if he gives the ball to someone else and then runs on, he'll get the ball back mm. more rather than trying to beat someone with a, a, a yard of pace. I don't always think he, I don't think he has, basically. I don't think he's as quick. He looks like he should be quick. But he he's really not, does. Is he? I think he really anyone, looks like he's anyone who spent that much time on the haircut <coughs> does tend to look quick. But yeah, Eric Lamella, you let us know what you think, but um, we're excited. I think this could be his real, you know, I think he had a breakout season last season, but he could really push on this mm. time. Okay, it brings me on to another young player. He's really um, he's really grabbed his chance this preseason. Cameron Carter-Vickers, uh, American international centre-back. Uh, obviously, uh, Jan Vertonghen is injured, but in training, coming back soon. Uh, and Toby at the start had been uh, away with Belgium. So Carter Vickers came in and um, he's played in all the games, Juve, Atletico Madrid, and then the last game against Inter Milan. And in that one, he really impressed me. He looked calm on the mm. ball, especially. Against Inter, he was next to Toby. He was next he? to so Toby, yeah. Look, that's great experience That's going to help anyone, well. yeah. Yeah, that'll help anyone. But it's great experience for him to play against argu arguably our best centre-back. Obviously, Vimmer was injured as well. Was yeah. it his face or something? But... Yeah, he's I got mean, a slight hamstring. He's got a slight oh, okay. hamstring, yeah. But regardless, you know, getting those minutes under your belt with such a, a class centre back, you know, learning from the best, you know, can only be good for him. And obviously, he was on the bench a few times last season as well. They're starting to integrate him into the team a lot more. So I think we could probably expect to see him a bit more this season. You think we won't? You know, uh, Fazio has now gone out on a loan, which will become Thank a permanent God. deal. Do you think Carter Vickers will be on the bench the whole time, uh, along with Vimmer, when Jan and Toby are fit? Or do you think we'll buy another player? I sort of hope we don't, because, mm. you know, like you said, he's been playing really well. He's an American international. Mm. You know, he's a great player and he's a solid player as well. He's a definitely a player that Pochettino yeah, rates. rates. He also has a good attitude. He loves, this is the thing, his, his main things are, from what we've seen this summer, he bought Janssen, big player, Wanyama, big player, both strong players yeah, yeah. Uh, who and, work hard. Yeah. And, so and with good <coughs> good kind of mentality, I think. Yeah, so you, I, f I genuinely think that we don't really need another centre-back. My only worry with Carter Vickers um, is I wonder whether is he big enough. He's not the tallest. I mean, obviously he's built very big, but he's not the tallest. I, th I think he's a probably around six foot. And uh, sometimes when I've seen him in those games up against strikers who are a bit bigger than him, I worry if he, he loses the first header a bit much. But... You know, there have been great defenders who have been six foot only, but uh, mm. that would be my only slight issue at this point. But 
I'm sure Mascherano is not six foot. He plays no, centre and, back. but he plays centre back for Barca. A slightly different thing than the Premier League. But you know, I'm pretty sure Pochettino knows more than me. Yeah, that's just that's just what I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's move on to uh, Danny Murphy. Now, I know you're not a big fan of Danny Murphy. So I quite like him. I think he's a good pundit. But he has said that he is unsure whether Vincent Janssen is the right signing for Spurs. Unproven in the Premier League. He's given examples of some other players that have been signed from the Dutch League who haven't worked out. He played with Brian Ruiz at Fulham. He said it, he just wasn't the right player for, Fulham, uh, for, for the Premier League. But I think Vincent is a lot stronger than him in terms of physicality. Uh, another one I guess you could bring up is Matija Kesman, who never worked at Chelsea when he'd been top scorer in Holland. Is, is Danny Murphy there? You know, I think it was on TalkSport. He's obviously just been asked a question. You know, is that just kind of classic journalism where he's got to give an answer? Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I rate Danny Murphy as a pundit, but he has said a few things in the past that you question. I mean, before he said that Eric Dyer and Deli Ali weren't ready to be England international, full England internationals. Obviously, we've seen that this summer wasn't a great example of what England players can do. Everyone was at fault, though, this summer. Yeah, I mean, Eric Dyer, I thought, but, played really well, actually. But. But, you know, look, just look at them, and, and, and you can see that um, Danny Murphy was wrong. And then also... For instance, this thing with Janssen, he's already scored two, two, three goals in pre-season. Mm. Admittedly, they're not against the best teams in the world, but his, like we say, his goal against Inter was a good yeah. finish. And yeah, fair enough, if he hadn't scored any goals in pre-season, then you could probably say that. But yeah. you also look at, he's been named the, dubbed the next Ruud van Nistelrooy. So, yeah. you know, it can go two ways. He can either be completely crap or as good as Van Nistelrooy was. Yeah. Obviously, it's too early to say Do that. You get the feeling, I get the feeling that there's a lot less pressure on Janssen than there was on, say, Bobby Soldado when he first came in, who I think everyone was expecting to be the real deal. I think he came in around the age of 26, obviously a huge transfer fee, He'd done the business in mm. Valencia. Um, so we were all expecting him to hit the ground running, and uh, that never really happened. With Vincent, I feel like um, he's probably got a bit more time on his side I also to, think to coming off the bench a little bit. Yeah, that, and also I think maybe he's got a few more strings to his bow in terms of what he can do in a game. For instance, Soldado, you can only really use him as a striker that's going to be a bit of a poacher, mm -hmm. which is what he was used like in at Valencia. And I don't think maybe I might be wrong, but um, I don't think he was used to his full strength in every game that we yeah. played him in. Yeah, which is po probably why, or potentially why, he didn't get as many goals as he wanted him to. He, he was an expensive player. Mm. So he already had that over his head as well. Admittedly, Janssen cost 18 odd million, which is a lot, but not so much in this not day with and the age, TV is it? deal. No, the way I look at it is, you can pretty much double every every transfer fee from what it used to be. So 18 mm. is like an old nine million pounds because everyone who's selling uh, who's selling a player right now knows that the TV deal has come to English clubs, so they are doubling their prices. Yeah. So that's when we look at something like John Stones that has gone through today for I think 47 million. You're looking at really. Realistically, that's about a 23, 24 million mm. pound buy, for, which for City is, is nothing, um, really. Uh, okay, so I think we're kind of in agreement that um, we we think Janssen's a good buy, and, and yeah. I think even if you know, even if it takes him a bit of time, at least he's only 22. That can come on. On to Jamie Redknapp. Obviously, uh, still loves his Spurs. His dad was a great manager of Spurs. I personally think that. I know a lot of Spurs fans thought Redknapp wasn't that great, but you know, two fourth place finishes in three seasons, unbelievable as far as I'm concerned. Um, Jamie Redknapp has said on Sky Sports he thinks Tottenham will go close this year and the fact that they've got um, not much change in their squad, haven't uh, no upheaval and uh, can hit the ground running themselves. Do you agree with that? This is, I've had this conversation with so many different people as to how I think this season's going to finish. And it's too hard to call. Yeah. You've got all these players coming in, these great players who are coming big in. Big clubs, big managers. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, is upheaval... A bad thing um, when you're bringing in a player of this quality. Mm. Who knows? But you know, you play in teams. We've all played in teams where you know players who've come in that you don't necessarily like or get on with. Sure. That could be detrimental. Obviously, different levels. It could be different. But that's an interesting knows? point about who the knows? egos. There, I hadn't really thought about that. But one thing that you'd say about Spurs and Leicester, who have lost a player but have, have gained a few players. Neither team seems to have gone for these huge big name mm. players who are going to bring those egos in, and that can only benefit us, I think. The worry I have um, in the short term is for the first game against Everton. 
it's just like now we had that 6-1 win against Inter. I think everyone will be expecting Spurs because uh, Everton have just lost Stones and Koeman's a new manager. They haven't really brought anyone in. I think everyone will be expecting Spurs to go to Goodison on the opening day and turn them over. But it will be a very difficult game. It I is really a tough place that. to go. I mean, we got two draws against them last season, didn't we? We so did. We absolutely battered them at Aaron Goodison Lennon last scored, year. And he? then nil-nil, we didn't take our chances. And then Lennon's put one in the top bins. <laughs> Uh, and then Deli Ali got his wonder goal. Oh, that was incredible. Yeah, finish. yeah. So, you know, we battered them there, and we have the ability to go there and batter them again. But, you know, I don't know. We'll do a match preview later in the week. But, you know, as a Spurs fan, even after last season, I'm still a bit like... Ugh, I was know. also sort of hoping that by this time, Lukaku may have moved on. Well, I think I kind of I kind of think a part of me wishes the Stones thing was still rumbling on and the mm. Lukaku thing will as well, because I think once they've left... Um, that at you least move you move on yeah. a bit and, and the club whereas you know Lukaku do you remember the whole you guys everyone will remember but when Berbatov was desperately trying to leave and then uh, on the opening day of the season we had Middlesbrough away and we couldn't pick him he basically refused to play I think. And, and, and we lost that game and everyone was like oh it's because of that so we could do with some of that in Everton's ranks I think uh, as yeah. well um, but Jamie Redknapp as far as I'm concerned Yes, you're right. You know your football if you say we can win the league I'm absolutely with you uh, finally on today's Spurverts Nabil Bentaleb, one of the players, uh, along with Pritchard and Fazio, uh, who've been told they can leave Spurs, and two of them have now left Spurs. Uh, good luck to Alex Pritchard, by the way, who uh, got a bit of run out, I think, uh, for Norwich's 4-1 win on the opening day. Good lad. Um, Nabil, I think it must be an attitude problem as far as I'm concerned. I think Pochettino will always choose good attitude over talent. Yeah. Uh, it seems as if it's been a long time coming as yeah. well. Because obviously he renewed his contract. Yeah, five-year deal, exactly a year ago. Yeah. But that took its time in itself, and in that time, Dyer went on to do sure. the the great things that he did. Yeah. Um, and obviously, he hasn't reacted well to that. Bentaleb, I mean. Yeah. And yeah, Pochettino's seen a side of him that the season before we hadn't seen, um, which is a shame because he's such a good player. He's been with us for years. Um, yeah, he kind of came from nowhere. He yeah. was almost like one of the. Apart from Kane, one of the early examples of how the new academy was working, mm. the new training centre was doing its job when Show had brought him in. And, you know, I'm happy to admit it. A year ago, I was saying that season four, he'd been my favourite player. I really liked him, really liked the way he plays great balls between the lines. Uh, obviously, a good, a good at winning the ball back as well. But like I said, I think with Pochettino, the example is, is obvious. You know, looks like Carroll and Mason are going to stay. And a lot of fans have been saying for a while, oh, are they good enough? But the key is, they have the right attitude and they will work hard. And Bentaleb obviously doesn't have that. Mm. So talks of Juve. Juve were also in interested in him supposedly a year ago. I've heard rumours of 10 million. I think pretty much for someone who's only played 50-odd game, 50 games for us and came through the academy, 10 million would be good for him. Well, he only played five times for us last season as well, which yeah. you know isn't great. But um, 10 million is what they're saying. Uh, I haven't. Is there an actual bid? No, there's no bid. No bid yet. It's all. It's all rumours. But. As far as I'm concerned, if, if, if we got somewhere near 10 million and you think we paid 11 for Wanyama, then that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, no, that is a good deal. As I say, it's a shame to have to see a player of his quality. And like you say, a lot of people are saying he's better than Mason and Carroll, which in my opinion he is. You see Mason against Juve. The one thing that annoyed me about him was that finish where he put it past the post. Mm -hmm. You know, got it. He, uh, it was a good run to get in that. It position. It was a good run to get in that position. But he, um, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he did a similar thing last season in one of the games. And you know, in that sort of situation, you need to be scoring a goal. He did score the winner against Sunderland. Yes, from he that did. Situation, yes, he though. did. Yes, he did. But, but yeah, he but got anyway, anyway, I yeah. think I think the big point <coughs> is, you know, Pochettino knows. We trust in Poch got to say yeah. and, and there, in, in any 25 man squad there will be players where some of the fans don't agree but let's face it compared to a couple of years ago three years ago where there were massive players on massive wages who we were all like get out of the club like Adebayor for instance I think once again we have started the season Poch has got us in a position where we can be pretty confident that they're all going to work their asses off Jack thank you so much no for coming on Spurverts guys let us know what you thought of the things we discussed in the comment section below who was your favourite player uh, performance against Inter in the 6-1 thrashing what do you think of Cameron Carter Vickers' uh, improvements during pre-season is Danny Murphy right or should we be very confident about Vincent Janssen and uh, tell us what you think about Jamie Redknapp's thinking uh, that we might be able to win the league and what do you want to happen to Nabil Bentaleb? Guys, don't forget to uh, give this a share and a like and subscribe to the channel on YouTube, of course, if you're not already, but you probably are. Uh, and follow us on Twitter and Facebook, at Spurred on TV. And most importantly, come on, you Spurs. 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 Come on, you Spurs.
Gibby. To talk about the top 10 summer signings oh, yeah, summer. of all time in the Premier League era. 